Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. The dog days of summer are here and Barstonians are looking to get out of the house and into the great outdoors. Many city dwellers flock to the Emerald Necklace, connecting neighborhoods throughout Boston. The 1,100 acres of parks host golfers, zoos, visitors to the zoos, athletes, nature and music lovers. And this summer, Boston's green space has been bursting with opportunities. Our Erica Tarantal and Ted Reinstein with Boston's iconic outdoor gyms. A park is an oasis, a place to commune with nature and press the reset button. It allows you to wander, allows your mind to relax and rest. Our parks are our common ground throughout the city. Creating common ground was the mission of Frederick Law Olmsted, founder of American Landscape Architecture. 2022 marks the bicentennial of Olmsted's birth and his epic impact across North America. What did Olmsted design? Well, <laughs> what didn't he? Homestead's greatest work includes New York's Central Park, the U.S. Capitol Grounds, Montreal's 700-acre Mount Royal Park, and, of course, Boston's Emerald Necklace. These 1,100 acres link neighborhoods via winding paths and waterways. Professor Ted Landsmark directs the Dukakis Center for Urban and Regional Policy at Northeastern University. I grew up in New York, and I would ride my bicycle around Central Park, and I always thought it was the most wonderful park in the world until I moved to Boston. A linear park, as is the case with the Emerald Necklace in Boston, where one is constantly encountering new features, new ways of thinking about space, is a much more intriguing way of designing a park because there's always magic. That magic also controls flooding and relieves overcrowding. Picture Boston without the Common in the Public Garden or the Commonwealth Avenue Mall. What about the Back Bay Fens, the Riverway, Olmsted Park, and Jamaica Pond? Not to mention the Arnold Arboretum and Franklin Park. Olmsted was at the height of his career. He's famously quoted as saying to his mentees and his sons, nothing must come before. The Boston work, nothing compares in importance. When Olmsted originally designed the fence. Jen Mergel is an educator and art curator. She's in charge of cultural partnerships for the nonprofit Emerald Necklace Conservancy based in this historic house next to Jamaica Pond. Olmsted worked just down the road in Brookline starting in the 1870s. It took his firm more than 20 years to build the Emerald Necklace. Boston had a lot of problems to solve, a lot of sanitary problems, water flow problems. Remember, Boston is surrounded on three sides by water, and as the city kept landfilling by the 1870s, the flats of what became the Fens area were a fetid sewage swamp. Olmsted's green solution combined engineering skills with his signature style, carefully mimicking nature's asymmetry. He recognized that it was important to have a pathway that didn't necessarily have a clear destination destination, that one is intrigued by what might lie around the next bend. Given that Olmsted considered himself an artist, I would argue that the Emerald Necklace Park System, the parts that he designed, are the largest immersive art installation in the city. He also knew about the potential health impacts of exposure to nature, fresh water and fresh air. Most important, Olmsted believed parks should be free and open to all. To my mind, Olmsted's greatest strength was that he did not see himself as a person who was only designing for elites and wealthy people. What shaped that view was his work as a reporter. Well before he became a landscape architect, between 1852 and 1854, while in his early 30s, Olmsted wrote for the New York Daily Times, which later became the New York Times. He was commissioned to write about the conditions of slavery across the South for Northern audience. Sarah Zodi is a professor at the Harvard Graduate School of Design, as well as founding principal of a landscape architecture and design firm in New York. She's writing a book retracing Olmsted's pivotal time in the South. When he travels South, he comes away with some key conclusions. Slavery, you know, not only dehumanized the enslaved, but it also dehumanized 
the enslavers. What he witnessed in the South was a lack of investment in public education, in museums, in health, in the kind of common mm -hmm. good that's required to bring up the common man, as he puts it. So you're saying that there's an absolute connection with what he experienced and saw, and then how that affected the way he looked at public spaces. Exactly. It was actually designing the society he sought for America to be. If we were going to form a post-bellum society in the form of a democracy, that we needed a sense of civic ground. Parks, where everyone has access. Really what the wind at our back in terms of advocating and designing for these spaces is understanding the legacy of Olmsted and the legacy of our profession, its origin story, that these spaces really are important to the project of democracy. At nearly 530 acres, Franklin Park is the largest park in the Emerald Necklace. In fact, the biggest park in Boston. Best known for its zoo and public golf course, Franklin Park connects Jamaica Plain, Roxbury, and Dorchester. It's the jewel of Homestead's Emerald Necklace, and so we need more, and we've always gotten less. And so now we're finally beginning to get something, so we're trying to improve on that. Ricky Thompson is president of the Franklin Park Coalition, which advocates for the park and organizes community events. One night, we have um, open mic. Oh, nice. Yeah. You ever get on there? No. <laughs> For so many years, this park was neglected. When I got in high school and I started running cross-country track and schoolboy track in the stadium behind us, I realized the park was so much more. You won't even realize you're still in the city of Boston. You think you're out in the country somewhere. Franklin Park is home to dense woodlands, trails, and stone ruins. Scarborough Pond attracts photographers and walkers. So what are your goals for the park at this point? We want to improve the Blue Hill Ave entrance. We want to improve the Walnut entrance and also the Glen Road pathway coming into the park. We'd like to make Franklin Park a destination. When you look at the downtown brochures that they give out in the hotels, it kind of stops at Back Bay. We want people to know that Franklin Park is here. In addition, the park hosts a variety of music festivals. A recent kite festival drew 3,000 people. Making good use of parks is the Olmsted way, says Professor Landsmark. He learned from people of color and he designed for multiple cultures, multiple ages, so that they could come together and understand each other greater and appreciate this vast, evergreen accomplishment. Olmsted was the kind of designer who was able to see into the future and to imagine how we, in the year 2022, might use a park that he designed more than a century and a half before. And up next, summer on the Charles River. The free rowing opportunity open this summer to all Boston Public School students. That's next on CityLine. But first, some extra opportunities to see and learn something new.